Hello everyone, it is patch time again, 14.9.5 from BSG. This is the one that they teased recently at TwitchCon, so we kind of knew some of the stuff that was going to be coming up in this particular patch, but let's go through it from the beginning. To start with, a highly anticipated change, the PvE zone offline single player. For all players with access to the PvE zone, raids for solo players will be run on the local PC. The game experience as well as the operation of in-game mechanics is completely identical to online play, but for group raids, raids as a scav and raids on Streets of Tarkov, the game will utilize the servers. So if you're playing with multiple people, so not just yourself, if you're playing as a scav, and raids on the Streets of Tarkov in particular, you'll have to wait in the matching queue to get into a raid for these particular game modes. Now I can kind of see why Streets might be the case, because this is quite a hard map to run, and maybe there's too much to do client side for it to actually run smoothly for people. And so they are forcing you to play on their servers so that your computer doesn't end up at like 30 FPS and basically having a slideshow on a lot of people's computers. As a scav, I'm not really sure why that's required to be on the server, but I guess because you load in partway through the match, maybe they didn't want to kind of re-engineer the infrastructure around that. And group raids, we know, well, you're going to have to be matched together anyway, and they don't have a peer-to-peer -peer system. So you're going to have to be on the BSG servers for that. But Nikita said previously that 70% of players were playing solo. And so that means that, yeah, you're just going to get into raids much quicker. So even if you're playing some of these other game modes, hopefully there'll be far more servers available, you know, nearly two or three times as many servers available. And so it should be faster to match for these other game modes too. So everybody's going to benefit. Next on the list, we have a wish list mechanics, which I didn't really think this was going to be that good. But reading this, it sounds really, really cool. Players can add an item to one of several pre-created wishlist categories. Items added to a wishlist are displayed in a separate section of the handbook. I don't know if that matters that much. Wishlist items have unique visual differences. So I guess like a tick or a color or something. When obtaining such items through various methods, the player will receive a corresponding notification, which is really cool. That means you'll be able to see it in the bottom corner when you pick up something that's on one of your wishlists. Players can customize the frequency of notifications in game settings. Also awesome. I didn't expect we were going to get that level of control. Added the ability to automatically add items needed for the hideout to the wishlist. So as you're going around the raid, you'll be able to find out which items you need and which ones that you don't because it'll be marked on the items themselves. This is huge and actually reduces the kind of like knowledge gap a little bit between players who played for a long time and new players, which I honestly don't think is a bad thing. There's enough knowledge in this game rather than having to remember every single hideout item and all of that stuff. There's still quest items are still important, right? You're still not going to be told in advance what quest items you're going to need. So there still exists for the most part. It's just really nice quality of life. The available options for this feature can again be configured in the game settings. So we'll see what that looks like, but it sounds good. The wishlist persists after wipes and you can clear the list manually in the game settings. I've said this a couple of times that the features that BSG have been implementing recently are actually really good quality. Things like the ammo loader and stuff like that, they've actually done really well on them and they've clearly put a lot of thought into it, which in the past has not necessarily happened in quite as good a way. So I, I think they're doing a good job here. Next section, in-game feedback and surveys. This was an ask from the Pestily interview with Nikita and people have asked for this for a while because just polling on Twitter or wherever, Reddit, it's a very specific subset or cut of the community and doesn't encompass all players. So now they're gonna add the community feedback system survey within the game available in the surveys tab in the bottom menu. So not even on the launcher, this is gonna be in-game, which is awesome. Completing surveys helps improve the quality of the game and players can earn in-game rewards for completing surveys. So people are actually incentivized to go and fill it out, not just the most dedicated members of the community. All right, so now we have some AI adjustments in PvE mode that people have been asking for. I played PvE mode a little bit and I thought the AI was really not very good. And so this is desperately needed. AI PMCs now pick up items, loot crates and bodies, trying to choose more valuable loot. They also pick up weapons and equipment. And if they find better equipment, they will replace theirs with it. AI PMCs can travel all over the location. They build routes to points of possible loot concentration bots move in a tactical formation when they reach the destination point they collect loot and then can wait for enemies for some time setting up ambushes mm, wonderful ai pmcs now extract from the location if they have collected enough loot or enough time has passed since the start of the raid ai pmcs now sprint more often when moving in open terrain ai pmc level on ground zero for the beginner version will be limited to level 20 as it is in the online mode all ai will now react to the enemy if information about them came from any nearby bots so for example if you're spotted by a bot and they yell all bots regardless of faction will hear it and decide to move in your direction or take cover or perform some other action ai scavs will now travel all over the location and search for valuable loot scavs are less picky about loot quality than ai pmcs scavs move between potential destinations in tactical formation if they are traveling in a group. This is the first iteration of AI improvements within PvE. In future, we also plan to refine the tactical behavior of AI as well as the interaction system between AI of different factions. In future updates, the necessary mechanics will be moved to PvP. Awesome. 
So next up, we have the new tasks. They have added the nostalgia questline. We've heard a bit about this from Nikita in the past for the game's life path, which I don't know what that means. Available only to owners of EOD. I thought this was going to be for the unheard bonuses, but apparently added a new questline for obtaining Mark of the Unheard, allowing owners of any edition to obtain this in PvE, and added a new questline for obtaining extended PMC pockets, allowing owners of any edition to obtain this item. Maybe wrongly, but I thought that Nostalgia was the PMC Pockets quest, so apparently this is something different. So I'm not sure whether this is going to be some of the advantages that you get from the Unheard edition, maybe for EOD people, or whether it's something else entirely, or maybe it's something to do with map-to-map -map travel. I doubt it, but we'll see. Then we've got a couple of other random things. We've got customization, new outfits for Yusek and Bear, available for purchase for GP coins. Purchasing these outfits requires high standing with Ref. I still wonder why they didn't add this as microtransactions personally, because I think the community would have been fine with it. They should probably add it as well as GP coins. Not everyone wants to play Arena to unlock these things. Some people might just want to pay for it. And given it doesn't matter in the game, they may as well just have that paid option there. This would have been a lot better than all of the debacle that's happened recently. For PvE, they've added the ability to wipe your profile so you can self-wipe. The PvE profile never wipes normally and doesn't wipe even when the regular game wipes but you can self-wipe if you want to start again so expanded the profile reset options now you can reset pve and pvp progress together or separately so you can wipe your pvp you can wipe pve you can wipe both together or do neither now this next one is kind of an interesting one compensation for reporting players who violated the game rules players will receive in-game currency compensation after the report that led to the blocking of the violator. This is just a nice thing to make you feel like you didn't get as scammed as you did by getting killed by a cheater. Compensation comes with an in-game message informing of a successful report. Compensation for several successful reports will be combined. So good. We don't know exactly what the scale is, whether it scales with your kit or anything like that, but at least it's something. Lastly, we've got a couple of balancing adjustments. Increase the spawn chance of the following optics. So this is basically all of the LPVOs. We've got the Pilad one, this is terrible. The TAC-30, the Voodoo, the Mark IV, March Tactical, Razor, Schmidt and Bender, 1 to 8, the Sig Tango. So it's, it's pretty much all of the good scopes in the game. We've got PSO and all this stuff. I don't know why they would increase the spawn rate of these if they weren't going to be getting rid of them on the traders in some way. So maybe the Voodoo barter is going to go away or something. I'm not really sure. I personally do think that they should restrict some of this like high level end game stuff because it's just kind of too plentiful at the moment. Everybody just runs it constantly. And so maybe this is part of that, but we'll see. I think this is going to be one of the maybe hidden changes that we're going to have to get into the game and play with it to actually figure out if this has actually changed anything practically. And then they've reduced the recoil for the following bolt actions. Basically all of them. Uh, the only thing that matters for recoil of the bolt actions is being able to see your target when you fire. If you hold down the left mouse click button, you don't rack the bolt. So the scope jumps as you shoot and then you hold down left click and you can just continue to watch your target before you load a new round to make sure whether it hits or not. That's the only thing that really matters for the recoil. So that's interesting if you're a bolt action fan, maybe make some of the bolt action quests a little bit easier. We don't know exactly how much yet, so we'll see when we get into the game. And they've increased the leveling speed of hideout management and craft which is good. I think I'm quite a hideout management and crafting kind of person and I'm only at level 30 and we're nearly at the end of the wipe and they've also removed the hearing distance bonus from the perception skill. This is actually quite a big deal. This is now leveling the playing field between those with high levels and those with low levels. Previously, you got more hearing distance if you had higher perception, which I always thought kind of sucked because the gap between low level and inexperienced players and high level players is already dominated by skill and gear, never mind having other things like this, like perception. So I'm, I'm glad that they've got rid of that. Lots of people wanted them to do this for a long time, so this is good. Then we've got a couple of other miscellaneous things. Fix the incorrect physics of character bodies and loot objects in offline raids. Fix the EFT and EFT arena interaction UI when interacting with ref. Fix the cause of incorrect behavior of character bodies after death, which is quite funny. That's been like a ragdoll and like spasm all over the place. Fixed several localization errors in interface and tasks. Not that important, but just a nice little change. So here we have it. I mean, this is pretty good in terms of quality of life and extra stuff. Big update for those who like PVE. So go and test it out. Run it on your own PC. You're basically restricted just to the loading time on your own machine, which is awesome. So this is going to make PVE a lot more palatable, especially to people like me who don't want to sit through like six or seven minute offline raid when I could just play it on my own computer. So we'll see. Maybe I'll play it a bit more, especially with the AI changes. But go and test out all this stuff yourself. We're going to have to see how few of these things work out when we actually get into the game. So as always, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as usual, have fun in your raids.